In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you always. We gather once again around our table, the Eucharist, to celebrate our lives, to celebrate the sacrifice of Christ, to celebrate our new lives. This past week, I was gone for a few days up in Cleveland visiting our seminarians and going through, and when I returned Thursday to Youngstown, had uh, vision meetings uh, with our new Bishop Bonner, and he has all these ideas and all these visions and all these possibilities and dreams, and it is inspiring, and it's a lot of new work for me. But uh, together as parish, together as people, together as diocese, we look to the future. We look with great joy to all the possibilities of what we can do to bring about Christ in the world. And so as we come together to celebrate this day, we first recognize the times that we have failed to live up to the promises that we have made, that we failed to live up to the call of the gospel. And we turn to God now and ask for his forgiveness. Lord Jesus, you raise the dead to life in the Spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you bring pardon and peace to the sinner. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you bring light to those in darkness. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Glory to God in the highest. Glory to God in the highest. Glory to God. Glory to God in on earth. Peace to people of goodwill. We praise you. We bless you. We adore you. We glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father. Glory to God in the highest. Glory to God in the highest. Glory to God, glory to God in on earth. Peace to people of goodwill. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. Glory to God in the highest, glory to God in the highest, glory to God, glory to God in on earth. Peace to people of goodwill. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Glory to God in the highest. Glory to God in the highest. Glory to God. Glory to God in on earth. Peace to people of goodwill. Let us pray. Grant us, Lord our God, that we may honor you with all our mind and love everyone in truth of heart. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, 
who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses spoke to all the people, saying, A prophet is like me will the Lord your God raise up for you from among your own kin. To him you shall listen. This is exactly what you are requested of the Lord your God at Horeb on the day of the assembly when you said, Let us not again hear the voice of the Lord our God nor see this great fire any more, lest we die. And the Lord said to me, This was well said. I will raise up for them a prophet like you from among their kin, and will put my words into his mouth. He shall tell them all that I command him. Whoever will not listen to my words which he speaks in my name, I myself will make him answer for it. But if a prophet presumes to speak in my name, and an oracle that I have not commanded him to speak, or speaks in the name of other gods, he shall die. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, I should like you to be free of anxieties. An unmarried man is anxious about the things of the Lord, how he may please the Lord. But a married man is anxious about the things of the world, how he may please his wife, and he is divided. An unmarried woman or a virgin is anxious about the things of the Lord, so that she may be holy in both body and spirit. A, un, excuse me, a married woman, on the other hand, is anxious about the things of the world, how she may please her husband. I am telling you this for your own benefit, not to impose a restraint upon you, but for the sake of propriety and adherence to the Lord without distraction. The word of the Lord. from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Then they came to Capernaum, and on the Sabbath Jesus entered the synagogue and taught. The people were astonished at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. In their synagogue was a man with an unclean spirit. He cried out, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are the Holy One of God. Jesus rebuked him and said, Quiet, come out of him. The unclean spirit convulsed him, and with a loud cry came out of him. All were amazed and asked one another, What is this? A new teaching with authority. He commands even the unclean spirits, and they obey him. His fame spread everywhere throughout the whole region of Galilee. The Gospel of the Lord. The word authority comes up twice in this Gospel. And if all I were to do would be to preach on the Greek of that word, you would be informed of something. But you would be bored to tears. The word means from his very substance, from his very existence, which can lead us into better things. So when I prepare homilies, I do have to prepare, and I do have to think about what you need and what you want, and what will be best that the scriptures are trying to say to you. But also there's a part of it that what I'm saying has to come from who I am from the very substance of my existence. So, back many years, I was teaching at a high school, and one of the teachers had asked me, can you come into my room with freshmen and kind of review or teach how to go to confession? I said, sure. I'm not a priest, but I've been to confession. This shouldn't be a problem. 
So I went in, and I played the priest, and he kind of made up a few sins that he thought freshmen in high school would do. And then he looked at me, and I realized, I have to say something. I have to give advice. I have to clarify any moral theology. And all of the students are staring at me. And I have authority. Because I am a minister, a lay minister, I'm a teacher, I've been placed ahead of them. And whatever I say, they're somehow going to believe. So I have to be very careful with what I say. And I was scared. I got through it and it was fine. Practicing confession, practicing preaching all these things during seminary, um, in the classroom for how to go to confession, if you're curious, they are very exciting and nerve-wracking classes, but the professor goes down through, and we're all in the classroom, and he just says, all right, I'm coming to you. I am, I sound young, and I sound female, and I'm behind the screen. And then they go. Now, in the classroom at first, the very first guy among us that, that practiced being a confessor, it was awful. And he kind of put his head down and banged it against the desk because he knew it was awful. And it was like, good, now we can get better. But the very first time I was in the confessional was not for three days until after I was ordained a priest. Because the first day I was ordained a priest, it was, I'm going to go sit in the confessional. And nobody came. And then the next day, there was many things happening, and I didn't have time to sit in the confessional. So finally, I'm sitting in there, and I just start sweating. Because this isn't class. This isn't pretend. This is for real. And getting used to it, going through it with time. Luckily, my very first parish assignment uh, was a confession machine. Uh, we had to have two priests every Saturday for at least an hour and a half. And the line would go around. So the nerves went away within a few weeks because there wasn't time. But that knowing that what I'm saying has a certain authority, I have to work on what I know, I have to work on who I am, and work on what I say. Let's jump now to something that you will be much more interested in. A friend of mine, uh, when he had his first baby, very first kid, you're studying, you're learning all the way through the pregnancy, you're at the hospital, and everything's great, and then they send you home with the baby. And you get home, and there's the kid. And there's mom and dad staring at the kid. And then mom and dad look at each other and say, oh no, this is for real. We have to bring up this baby. This child is dependent on us for its life, for food, for love, for an education in virtue and how to choose right from wrong. What are we going to do? They realize that now it was, I have to work on who I am. I have to work on what I say. And I have to work on my own virtue. So when they notice in the Gospels that Jesus is speaking from his very being, we see that that is a call for all of us. Because there are people in family, there are friends we interact with, there are people we run into that ask us for help, that ask us for advice. And know that because you are sitting here or watching, they know that you have a certain faith. And part of the reason why they're coming to you is a mixture of they want to hear how your faith is going to help them. There is a certain trusted authority that comes from friendship, that comes from past experience, that comes from recognizing what you have already gone through. And so when someone comes to you for help, comes to you for advice, comes to you for support and love, now it becomes real. 
because they're going to listen to what you say and believe it. So we all need to take time to look at our existence, the substance of who we are. What do we believe? What do we know? What have we learned from in our lives, the good and the bad? And what now are we saying? And what are we doing? We're all playing with reality now. We all have roles in our lives where what we say and we do has an effect. Know that you are given the grace to help others. Know that if you rely on the basics of faith, know that if you say, I don't know, when you don't know, just your love, just your listening, just the example of your life can still have an effect, can still help. Lent is coming up very soon. That's always that yearly time to re-examine our souls, our consciences, the direction of our life. Getting ready for Lent and our promises, our disciplines. Start now in your prayer. When I speak, there's always someone listening. So what do I say? When I pray, there's always someone watching. For what do I pray? And when I make decisions and act in my life, there's always someone paying attention and being influenced. So how am I living? What are the choices I'm making? And how can every choice lead to the kingdom and lead others as a light that they too can find their way through peace and love to live in the kingdom with us forever? I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With the love that we have, with the love that we need, we offer up all those prayers that we hold in our hearts to our loving Father.
For the Holy Father and all bishops and priests, may they encounter the bountiful blessings of the Spirit as they teach and lead the faithful. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all government officials, may God grant them the courage to make decisions out of love, mercy, and justice. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For families in conflict, may the grace of God move in and through them to bring about healing and reconciliation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our faith community, may the Lord sow seeds that bear much fruit in building up his kingdom on earth. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all those discerning or pursuing a vocation to the priesthood or consecrated life will find encouragement through our prayers and sacrifices on their behalf. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our beloved dead, may they soon experience the fullness of God's kingdom. For Helen Lipschi, who died this past week, and for Bonnie Stevenson, the intention of this Mass. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear And gracious God. Gracious God, throughout the world, we know there are those who have no one to pray for them. We know there are those lost in loneliness. Help us always to remember them in our prayers and remember them in our kindness and generosity, that they can know your love through us and who can feel the benefits of a life filled with grace and reaching out. We ask this all through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O Lord, we bring to your altar these offerings of our service. Be pleased to receive them, we pray, and transform them into the sacrament of our redemption. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by his birth he brought renewal to humanity's fallen state, and by his suffering canceled out our sins. By his rising from the dead, he has opened the way to eternal life. And by ascending to you, O Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so, with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, Lord God of hosts, heaven and of your glory, Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest, Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of
sun in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and David our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, 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 amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, 
as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace in unity and accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Our communion hymn is We Remember. Celebrate, for you are with us. 
Let us pray. Nourished by these redeeming gifts, we pray, O Lord, that through this help to eternal salvation, true faith may ever increase. Through Christ our Lord. I preached last weekend on the, the Bible that we have, and uh, so, yeah, I didn't bring any Bibles with me, so that's not good. So uh, hopefully next weekend I'll remember of a number of Bibles. There also, the following week, there will also be a book, an introduction to prayer, um, that will be available for everyone as a, as a Lenten reading. The focus throughout Lent this year for the parish I'm kind of putting in the bulletin is on prayer, not taking uh, the basics for granted, but there'll be a lot more coming Lent is just around the corner, so we'll have everything in the bulletin that you'll need. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. 